Merry Christmas, church. Oh, it's great to see everybody. Hey, if you're new with us or you're tuning in for the first time online, I encourage you to download our church app and uh, just get connected and see what's coming up and what's coming up in the new year as well. In fact, let's focus our attention on that for just a moment. Uh, we have our diaper drive this month, our diaper and wipe drive for a caring pregnancy center. So there's still time to bring those in uh, through next week. And oh, here's a good one next week. Who likes to take down Christmas decorations? I know who does, but please join us next week so I don't have to do it by myself. And uh, men, the Promise Keepers uh, event is coming up. Get registered for that. The fast, we do a fast every year. If you're like new, it's like, what's a fast? Well, we'll be talking about that coming up really quickly. And uh, for those of you who love uh, to host a group, uh, they're coming up in February. In February, we kick off a new set of groups. Uh, so if you'd love to host one, have one in your home. And what, what's that consist of perhaps? Well, you just use the discussion guide each week that we have at the bottom of our outline that you can get on your app. So we worship on Sunday, maybe midweek, you gather your friends or your relatives in your house, uh, go through the discussion guide and host a group uh, giving. For those of you who've asked about that, uh, just get your gifts in if you have any other gift uh, to do that by next Sunday. And in fact, uh, it's, it's like it's Christmas Eve. Isn't it fun to get gifts? Uh, so, hey, did you get a ticket? If you did not get a ticket when you came in, raise your hand. We want to get you a ticket. Uh, yeah, get a ticket. And uh, we're going to come around. What we're going to do is we have a, a, this nice gift, $115 value. It is handcrafted, not handcrafted, but crafted. And um, these were donated to us. It's the Christmas story. There's eight ornaments in it. It's very nice, and it can be a new tradition in your home. So we're going to get a ticket. We're going to draw for that in a moment. And then on your way out, whoever is the winner, um, we, you can pick that up at Connecting Point on your way out. So make sure you get a ticket. Uh, now, I, I want to transition to worship through giving. Uh, there's so many ways to give. If you're hearing about giving for the first time, uh, go to our website and learn why it is that we give. Uh, but I want to read this verse of scripture I've been reading this month from John, 1 John chapter 3. It says, if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. So when, when we give, um, we're not only just giving to the church, we are able to give in so many ways. And one of the things that we do here is we give away a tithe or 10% outside the walls of the church. So understand that when you give and when we're faithful to God, we're able to just not only in our community around the world, we're able to support uh, partnering agencies uh, that, that we have partnered with. And one of those, I mentioned a Caring Pregnancy Center. Uh, it's downtown, and uh, what we do with it, we have the baby bottle boomerang coming up, and we put our change in that. We bring the diapers in. Why do we do that? It's a very significant reason is because we want to save lives. And one of the things we did this past year for the very first time was we sponsored a bench uh, in town. It has the number on that, and uh, there's several uh, benches in town where uh, churches and individuals have sponsored these benches. Well, we learned uh, that this year, the bench right uh, in proximity to the abortion clinic wasn't going to be sponsored. So this year, we're going to sponsor two benches. And one of those, yes. Um, and here's how significant that is. Uh, I was talking with them this past week, and they got a call about a week and a half ago. A young lady had left the abortion clinic. She was going to schedule a, an abortion. She came out, and she saw the bench that we're going to sponsor, called the number, and set up an appointment at ACPC because she decided she wanted to see the baby. And so let's pray that that baby will be saved. Yes. So let me word a prayer as we prepare our hearts to give. Father, I thank you for giving, for giving your one and only son, Jesus. Oh, we celebrate that right now in this season. And I pray today as we think about giving that we can do so much when we're faithful to you in giving and through the church 
we're just able to save lives, not just on this earth, but also for eternity. Thank you, O oh Lord, for all that you do for us, for giving us your son, Jesus, and we pray in his name. Amen and amen. So I guess we'll get a ticket now. I can't really see. There we go. Oh, yeah. Did you draw one already? Or I get to do that again? Oh, this is just like <laughs> Christmas Eve. All right. So the winner is 577. Let me see your hand. 577. I think uh, the young lady back there. So pick up your gift on the way out. It looks like a lot of fun. So uh, Christmas shopping. Christmas shopping. Are you finished or not finished? Stand up and greet somebody. Tell them your name. Say Merry Christmas and tell them I'm finished or I'm not finished with my Christmas shopping. Stand up, stand up. Oh, this month, what have we been talking about? We've been talking about the sounds of Christmas. We've been looking at some of the favorite songs that we've been, uh, that we sing every year. You know, I saw an article with a headline, Christmas, what's the point? Well, I think and I hope through going uh, through some of the songs by looking at the history of it, some of the words, that we might understand the point of Christmas and that it will never get boring and we can carry it over every day of the year. Uh, so today, we're going to look at the favorite song, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. <laughs> That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. No, today we're going to look at Away in a Manger, Away in a Manger. Uh, so let me give you a little bit of the background of this song, Away in a Manger. Um, it, people are, the, the lyrics no one really knows who wrote them. Some believe that Martin Luther, the great reformer, uh, wrote them. Others say, no, somebody else did. Others disagree and say it's wholly an American uh, song and, and written here in America. So there's some mystery who wrote the lyrics uh, to this amazing song. And there are all kinds of variations also to the lyrics. But there's no mystery that for decades and decades, this song has touched hearts. And uh, there's just something about imagining that, that, that God left heaven and came to earth and was born a, a little baby. And uh, I'll tell you, it's just in the lowliest of places. And I think it was just to show us that none of us is too low for God's grace and his mercy. So there's a phrase that's used over and over, as you could see, um, in this song. And we're going to focus on that. And my hope is when we hear the tune, when we sing the tune, when we worship with the tune, that we can think about what we talk about, what we're talking about today. So the phrase I want to focus on is the little Lord Jesus, the little Lord Jesus. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. Unfortunately, I think when we focus on the little baby Jesus, it kind of does a disservice to us. Uh, Jesus isn't just this six pound, eight ounce little baby Jesus, and there's so much more to what God intended. So rather than considering the size of, of the baby, what I want to do is I want to focus on this phrase, Lord Jesus the little Lord Jesus. So the key phrase, if you're taking notes, is Lord Jesus. In fact, somebody say that with me. One, two, three, Lord Jesus. Uh, 740 times in the New Testament, Jesus is described as Lord. 740 times. So let's read again and hear one of the most quoted uh, uh, verses dealing with Christ's birth and which illustrates and tells us the very meaning. The first time that we see Jesus called Lord in Luke chapter 2, 
When the Bible reads this, the angel said, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. Who is he? He is Christ the Lord. From the very beginning at his birth, we learn that Christ, he came to be the Savior of the world. He is Christ the Lord. He is Lord Jesus. Now, the question is, and I want to deal, it's what I want to deal with today, is what does that mean to us if he is Lord Jesus? What's that mean to our everyday life? I mean, if you're married, what's it mean to your married life? If you're dating, what's it mean to your dating life? If you're a student, what does it mean as, as a student? If we need to buy one more Christmas gift and we've got to do that and like loaf and jug, what does that mean? Lord Jesus, I need to find the right Christmas present. Well, the Greek word is translated Lord is the word kurios, which can mean literally supreme and authority controller, and yes, even Lord. And I could already imagine that some of you, when you're seeing that word controller, there's going to be some tension because you love to be in control. So you and Jesus, you've got this competition going on. And thankfully, I have no problem with being a control freak at all. As long as everything goes my way and everybody does what I say. Everything's going to be cool, like like even like dry. I like I like to be in control. If I'm if if I'm going to get in a car crash, I want it to be by my own hand. So I want to drive. If you come over to my house, do not touch the remote control. It is mine. I want to control that, right? Now I don't know what it'd be for you, but chances are, you probably like to control a few things as well. And it could be as simple as in my your everyday life. It's like I want to make a list. I want this day to go the way that I want it to go. How many of you are list makers and you do that every day? Yes, we'll pray for you. Uh, I understand that. We're going to do that. But it might be just with your kids. I just want my kids to do what I want them to do. Or I just want Christmas to be perfect. Just to wake up tomorrow morning, the kids come out of the room, their teeth are brushed, their hair is brushed, they come out, no fighting, the angels sing, and everything is perfect. But it's never perfect, is it? But so many of us want to be the controller, and we compete with Lord Jesus. So what does it mean even to make Jesus the Lord of our life? As a Christian, what does that mean? Now, for clarification, technically, we don't make Jesus Lord. God already made him Lord a long, long, long time ago. But when we designate him Lord, what does that mean? Well, it means we surrender to his supreme authority, that he is a controller. We're going to yield to that, that he is Lord of our life. So when we surrender to him, what does that mean? Well, today I want to talk about two levels of surrender. And the first is this, if you're taking notes, and this is the first level is when we have the partially surrendered life, the partially surrendered life. Statistically, just looking at it statistically, this appears to be where so many American Christians are living today. Uh, and I, you might refer to this as casual Christianity or cultural Christianity. And this is where somebody, well, I, I believe in God, but they pick and choose what it is they want to believe from the Bible, and they live a partially surrendered life. Now, Jesus talked about this in Luke chapter 6. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not what? Do what I say. It's like, why do you give me lip service? I want life service. Why do you call me Lord, but you don't do what I say? I want to give you the good life, but you choose to walk down the path that's not going to get you there. And this is where I believe so many people are living today. Oh, I know he's Lord Jesus, but I'm not ready to hand full control over to him. And, and, and we do this in so many simple ways. And, you know, you, when you're looking at the Bible, you think about, oh, I know what Jesus said about relationships. You know, he, he told me to pray for those who hurt me, to forgive people who hurt me. But then we go, you know what? You just don't know how that person hurt me. There is absolutely no way that I am going to forgive that. And what do we do? And we know what the Bible says about being generous 
to, to God and not to be crazy in debt. And we learn about the tithe in Scripture, giving 10%. Well, I could never give 10% of my income. There, I'm, not, I'm just barely getting by the way that it is. There, that's crazy. A tithe, and what do we do? Eh, we just rip it right out. Oh, I know what I'm supposed to do with my time. I'm supposed to worship the Lord. I'm supposed to serve the Lord. Well, you know, I'll go to church every now and then, but not when I want to sleep in. I mean, it's my life. Why would I want to keep that in there? Now, I saw some of y'all's faces. I pasted these in the Bible, so I'm ripping out extra pages. It's, it's, I hope lightning doesn't strike, but your people you go, I know it, it, it just terrifies me to even do that. But, but what would it be if I did rip the pages right out of my Bible? It's just ink on a page. But there's so many of us, just with the way that we live, we're ripping up God's word by the way that we live or by the way that we don't live. It's the partially surrender life. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? So let's, let's look at Proverbs chapter 3 from the PSV. The PSV stands for the partially surrendered version of the Bible. And it reads, trust in the Lord with some of your heart and lean on your own understanding. And some of your ways acknowledge him. And you can make your own path straight. Now, for those of you who are brand new to church, that version does not exist. I'm totally making that up. But here's the point. Jesus is no part-time Lord, and he doesn't call part-time followers. When you surrender to him, he wants you to surrender your whole life. Uh, look at what the Bible says in Matthew 16. It says, Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must what deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. And then look at this. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? He says, if you want to find your life, well, you've got to lose it. You've got to give it away. You have to surrender it to my control and come under my lordship. He is the supreme authority. He's the controller. And ultimately, he tells us what is right and what is wrong. He doesn't say pick and choose. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say. Uh, the church staff recently just met with the director of fellowship at Christian athletes, and we're just trying to see how we can be more involved in our schools with that. Chance Rodriguez came, and he, he brought to our attention a statistic. Um, it's a startling statistic, and we're going to put it up on the screen. It says this, that 70%, 70% of Christian teens are choosing to no longer follow Jesus after graduating high school. 70% percent are making that choice to pick and choose and look at what it says that only 16 percent of teens have stated uh, the future goal of becoming spiritually mature and staying connected to the body of christ only 16 percent teens watch out watch out for the devil parents church we need to heed those statistics because wh what does it matter if someone gains the whole world yet forfeits their soul. So here's what I want you to think about, and I want you to ask this question very, very prayerfully. What have I not surrendered to the Lordship of Christ? What area of my life am I still picking and choosing and exerting control? What area am I not allowing him to have authority over? Because most of us, in one way or another, we're living the partially surrendered life. Let's talk about another level of surrender, and that's point two, and that is the fully surrendered life, the all-in for Jesus life. It's, it's not the Sunday Christian uh, only or when it's convenient Christian or the God bless America Christian. It's all in, full on, holding nothing back. My life does not belong to me. It belongs to Jesus' commitment. And we read about this in the Bible in Romans 14. For we don't live for ourselves or die for ourselves. It says, if we live. Is there anybody alive out there today? Raise your hand. I have about 50% of you. Uh, we do have the prayer tables open afterwards so you can tell that you're alive. 
But what's it say here? It says, if we live, it's to honor the Lord. If we die, it's to honor the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. We belong to him. Our life is not our own. We surrender fully to his lordship. And let me illustrate that by the, the thought of the wedding ring. You know, some people put the wedding ring on and never take it off. Any of you like that? You put it on, you've never taken it off. You know, I read about a guy put his ring on. He weighed 136 pounds. And decades later, he weighed 180 pounds. You couldn't even really see his ring. And it just kind of like a tree. It just grew around that. Uh, but why do we wear a ring? It signifies I'm married. I'm committed. I'm committed. Um, 18 years ago, I spent a, all this money on a special ring for Denise. I mean, it cost me a lot. And um, I bought it on Thanksgiving Day. I got down on one knee and proposed, will you marry me? Now, how much did that gift cost when she said, I'll take that? <laughs> how much did that cost Denise? It cost me a lot. How much did it cost her? It didn't cost her anything in that moment. But when we stood before God and she said, I do, what did it cost her then? That gift cost her everything because now she belonged to me. I know, well, you didn't bone you, you male show. I know, but, but not, we got to understand this. She belongs to me, but I also belong to her. So, I mean, in thinking about that, if I wanted to go out and like dance on a tabletop with some creative ladies, you know, could I do that? Well, maybe for a little while until she came and reminded me, no, you belong to me. <laughs> and the point is when she received that gift of that ring, now that ring, even though it didn't cost her anything in the beginning, now it cost her everything. And here's the point. Jesus sacrificed his life for all of us, and he offers us the free gift of salvation. But when we receive that gift, it, it didn't cost us anything, but it cost Jesus everything. But when we receive that free gift, now it cost us something too. We no longer belong to just ourselves. Now we belong to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and we surrender to him being supreme in authority. That's why I'm so afraid when we, we see so much of this casual approach to Jesus day. Oh, he's the six pound, eight ounce baby Jesus. You know, he's, he's my, my buddy. He, he's my bro. But Jesus isn't just the little baby in a manger. And he's not just the Lord Jesus dying on the cross. Who is he? He, he is the soon coming, conquering Lord Jesus, the supreme in authority. He's going to carry his sword and he is serious. And on the name of that sword, it says the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he's coming back for us. And he is serious about that. Yeah. So we don't just say, Lord, Lord. And do whatever we please. He is the ruling and reigning King Jesus. 1 Corinthians 6 says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? And that's why when we watched all those baptisms, the Bible talks about, they, it, he ties everything. We, we die in that baptism. We're given the Holy Spirit. Our sins are forgiven. We're raised up a new creation, the Bible says. Uh, and it says, you are not your own. You were what bought at a price. Therefore, what are we going to do? We're going to honor God with our bodies. So that's what we do. We surrender to the Lordship of Jesus. Let's read Proverbs again, but not from the PSV, but from the NLT. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do. And what's he going to do? Well, he's going to show you which path to take. Now, that phrase, seek his will in all you do, it's the Hebrew word yada, yada, and it means to know. So it literally means uh, in all your ways, know him, get to know him. And as you get to know him, he will show you which path to take. I, I think one of the reasons today that so many of us don't surrender to some area of our, our life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ is because we don't know him in that area. 
We just don't know him in that area. To, to know him is to love him. To know him is to trust him. To know him is to surrender to him because when you know him, you're going to know that he's the ever-present, all-knowing, all-powerful Lord Jesus Christ and that he's good in every way. That's why God sent Jesus, God in the flesh, left the glories of heaven so we could see him, so we could get to know him, and so we could get to love him. In fact, somebody in the Bible asked Jesus, hey, what's the most important commandment? And, and Jesus basically said, it's a relational command. And, and Jesus answered this way in Luke 10, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. A fully committed, fully surrendered, based on a relationship with Jesus. Denise doesn't, we don't stay together because of a, an empty promise 18 years ago, but it's based on a growing relationship. As the years go by, it's all about relationship. And if there's any area that you haven't surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, it's likely because you don't know him in that area. Now, the tragedy is, is you don't want to bring fear up in a joyous time when fear is not needed, but sometimes we need a little reverent fear. And I'm afraid there's some today, just based on what I observe, that join church and go, it's, oh, it's cool to be in church. It's cool to serve. Oh, it's cool to get baptized. And oh, it's great to be able to say, bless you when somebody sneezes from across the room. But then there's no love relationship, no growing relationship no getting to know the Lord over the years kind of relationship. And if you've not given your whole life to Jesus Christ, there's some area that's untouched because you still have that control. You got to ask, do I really know him as Lord Jesus? Jesus said some of the most haunting words ever in Scripture in Matthew 7. He said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, oh, Lord, I got the bumper sticker. Lord, I got the shirt. I'm wearing the cross, Lord. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father, who knows the will of my Father who's in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform miracles? Well, in our world today, it would be, didn't I go to church every now and then? D didn't I give some money to the, the guy ringing the bell? Didn't I help the lady across the street? Wasn't I a good person most of the time? I mean, I went to church on Christmas Eve, Lord, Lord. <laughs> and then it goes on. Then I will tell them plainly, what's he say? I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Oh, you gave me lip service, all right but we just didn't know each other. You called me Lord, Lord, but you didn't do what I said. In reality, there's a huge difference than saying Lord, Lord and surrendering to Jesus, the one in supreme authority. He, he, he is a full-time Lord and he's calling full-time followers. And he's given us the offer, the free gift of eternal life. And I believe our only reasonable response is, here's my life, Lord, whatever you want. And we get to know him in every area. What do you do to surrender? Well, what are you trying to control? Maybe you need to release that control today. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. He doesn't want you to live the partially surrendered life, but the fully surrendered life as we think of him as Lord Jesus. Would you pray with me? Oh, the baby Jesus. Father, I pray today that you would speak to us and only the way that you can do through your Holy Spirit. And I just pray that relationships, that families 
all lives would be transformed because of your goodness, that we would fully surrender to Lord Jesus. I thank you for those who came in with hearts sensitive to what you would say to us. Empower us. Give us strength to surrender whatever it is that we're holding on to. Help us to know we can trust you and be fully devoted to you in every way, and that you would direct our path in the best way possible because so many of us are trying to do it on our own. And how well is that working out for us? Oh, Lord, I pray that we would surrender today, that we would follow what you say, and just tell us very clearly that the baby Jesus is Lord Jesus. And you call us, you say, if we're baptized in your name, calling on your name, that, Lord, you will save us for eternity. I thank you for that free gift that you gave and that we can think about every time we sing this song. We thank you for Jesus and pray in his name. Amen and amen.